Here I've got the low frequency expander from Yorick Tech and what it is effectively is a MIDI CC controller that can give three LFOs, a complex AADDSR envelope, as well as a CV sequencer and, uh, and some other bits and bobs as well. It's got, for example, a velocity destination as well, so you can do stuff with the synth that you can't normally do with your velocity. For example, here it's set up to the effects mix. If I hit it softly, I get no reverb or very little reverb, hit it hard. And there we're getting 100% reverb, so instantly you can see it can make your synth do things that it can't do out of the box. So I've got a little pad here. Matches the super simple pad if I disengage the LFE. And what we've got on there, we've got a few different LFOs. We've got an envelope or a sequencer sequencing the filter type. So it's effectively this knob is twisting and you can hear that distinct changes as it runs through an eight step sequencer. That can be up to 16 steps. And then I've also got, got VCO detune. So that's basically wiggling this knob and I'm also wiggling the filter frequency a little bit as well. And that's all synced with the clock of the OB6. So if I speed the OB6 up or slow it down. So it's a bit like an additional five slot modulation matrix that accesses all the parameters on your synth that are controllable via MIDI CC. But on the OB6 and the Profits, it's got a lot more integration, so much so that it actually comes with a OB6 style outfit like we've got here, and you've got a P6 one as well. And it can control the global settings on these as well. You can see which patch you've loaded. If we just load in a new patch, there we go, we're getting the names of the programs I've got in here. And it can do other things like it can save pair patch vintage mode or standard slot mode as well. So loads of integration with the OB6 and the P6, but you can't use it with pretty much any synth you like, any synth that takes MIDI CC control. It's got the OB6 loaded in this one at the minute, but you've also got Prophet 6, the CC synth, which is any synth, I'll show that in a second. Then we've got Prologue, Wave 2, Voyager, Prophet 5 and Prophet 10. So I think you pay extra, I think it comes with two of those and it's an extra for extra synths. So if we're in CC synth mode, that's not easy to say, um, we can load different synths. And here we can see in this on the memory card inside, we've got Big Stag, Deckard's Dream, Nord Lead One, Otto Bim, Mode Late, and the Super Six. And you can create these yourself. You just put the CC number in and give it a name, or you can send it as, a, as an Excel file if you've got a synth to Yorick Tech and they'll, they'll put it all into this format for you. But it's actually simple enough to do. But they're not as integrated as they are with the OB6 and the P6, for example. You don't get to see the, the, the names of the patches as you load them and, and the global settings, things like that. But you can still use it as a modulation source for any MIDI CC synth. The Otto BIM is in here, as is the Big Sky, so any effects pedal you've got that accepts MIDI CC can also be controlled by this. Get yourself a little bit of modular madness. I had hoped I could control my Juno 2 or my Juno 106 or the Jupiter 6 I've got in the studio at the minute, but they all require SysX, so this will only work with MIDI CC, not with SysX. And although it looks spectacularly close to the OB6, it's not affiliated in any way with Sequential. It's run by a very small company. It's just one guy based in the UK, he hasn't got a website, so he's only got a Facebook page, and I'll put a link to that in the description. I'm not going to go into every single function it's got on this because it is a deep machine if you want it to be, but the basic functions are really easy, really accessible. So we'll go through those, maybe a little bit of MPE support as well and see where we get to. But let's just start off by taking a quick look at the hardware. The unit itself is quite a chunky little thing, feels about the right size with the OB6 on the left here. It doesn't feel like a tiny little machine, it actually feels in 
in keeping, it feels in the right scale. It's an all metal construction, and this one here has got the walnut end cheeks on there, a little um, optional extra. I think they're about 50, 50 pounds. Uh, I have actually mentioned to them, it'd be quite nice to have this at the angle, or the option to have it at the same angle as the OB as well, which, um, which they're thinking about doing. All the knobs feel really, really nice. The buttons are nice and chunky. It just feels like a really sort of professional bit of kit. Except for on the back here, the machined holes have been machined by hand. As I said, it's a, it's a single person company. So these are a little bit rough. Doesn't make any difference to the performance of the machine, but um, if you got these professionally made, uh, or at least professionally drilled, it would cost a lot more for the machine itself. We've got a slightly oversized hole for the USB connector at the back, and that's because there's a little switch there to reset something. That's only been accessed by about two customers ever, so I think he's gonna get rid of the oversized hole because, in fact, he's found it's easier just to unscrew the four screws and take the top off if you need to do that. It's so, so rarely used. The USB is only used for updating it. It's not used for MIDI. MIDI is all controlled via the five pin MIDI DIN ports. In this one, we've got two MIDI ins, a MIDI out and a MIDI through. I think the very original ones didn't have quite so many, but this makes it really flexible and you can use it with a door, you can use it in polychain mode, you can do various MIDI merges and stuff in the menus in here. So it's, it'll fit with pretty much any setup. But yeah, overall, it's a really nice, chunky little box. Let's take a quick look at how you set it up then. So set it up with the MIDI out from the synth into the MIDI in of the LFE and the MIDI out of the LFE to the MIDI in of the synth with my nice color coordinated cables. And essentially what you do is you send the MIDI from the synth into the LFE that then merges it with its own stuff and then it sends it back to the synth. So we turn MIDI local off on the synth, otherwise you get MIDI triggering because you get it from the synth itself and then from the merge back again. But when you're playing the synth, everything you do is exactly the same as if you had MIDI on, MIDI local on. But in effect, what's happening is it's sending it to this and then that's sending it back. The unit's got essentially two main modes. We've got the sort of performance mode we can see here. This is the different uh, channels. We've got the envelope LFO1, LFO2 and LFO3. That's the envelope LFO1, LFO2 and LFO3. And then we've got the various sort of main functions of those. Then if we go into the menu, we've got menus which have got much more sort of deeper parameters that you can access for each of them, plus all the global stuff that we saw earlier where you can load the different synths, decide how you're gonna merge the MIDI, clock external or internal, and we've got an ARP in here as well that I've not mentioned previously as well. So lots of stuff in there. We've got this big engage button here and the engage button turns it on or off. But that's something that you get used to using quite a lot because once you're sort of going through the destinations and the LFOs run and you don't want to start tweaking other parameters unintentionally. So if you're going through the various destinations, I'll show this in a second. When you go through all the various destinations, you turn engage on and off. We've also got this distortion knob on the top left and that accesses the hidden distortion we've got in the OB6. When you're in P6 mode, it modulates the low pass and the high pass together, giving you uh, an easily accessible band pass. All the knobs and buttons essentially have a couple of functions. So you'll notice me flicking through the menus using these two up and down the menus. I can use the knob for doing that as well. Once I'm in the menu, let's go to something like an LFO. We've got various functions we can change. So this knob now isn't the frequency of the LFO. It's the delay. There's the fade in. Number of cycles. And when we're shifting through the values of the parameters, we can use the shift to go backwards so we don't have to cycle through everything. So here we can see we're going up, press shift, now we're going down. The knobs don't have a central indent, but they sort of got a dead space in the middle, so it's quite easy to find your way back to zero on everything. We can see here the distortion knob is adjusting the synth. So it really does feel like it's part and parcel of the same machine, actually. <laughs> Okay, let's start to dig into it then. Let's take a look at the envelope, which is sort of modulator one. We 
We've got it on an eight step sequence at the minute. That can be a 16 step. Then we've got all these other various functions. So let's take it to, let's go back to there. Normal, so now it acts as an A, A, D, D, S, R envelope. So it's a little bit complex. You've got attack one, level one, attack two, decay one, level two, decay two, sustain and release. So it sort of has a first attack, then a secondary attack and different levels on those. Then you decay, sustain and release. So if we put the main level or the initial level to maximum and put the decay and the attack and level two on minimum. I'm going to put it onto VCF frequency mode. So we go through destination. We can also go through quickly by using the knob. There we go, it was up there. So let's go back. There we go. Ah. VCF frequency. I'll show you what Malt does in a second. We'll leave it on max for now. And then we've got it on sync mode here. Sync mode, so it's on a, an eighth of a beat, so half a beat or an eighth of a bar. So let's put that onto just the key. So it'll trigger the envelope when we hit a key. And we can hear it as an ADSR envelope now. And you'll notice this amount here is on zero. So that's the LFE controlling the filter envelope. Why might you want to do that? Well, you might want to use the filter envelope for modulating the um, VCO2, for example. If we try that the other way around, because this sends MIDI CC and the MIDI CC that's received by the OB6 will change it by semitone, we'll get semitone changes in oscillator 2 frequency. I'll just show you that quickly, shall I? Let's go to uh, this. We're on VCO2 frequency now, so this envelope should change the frequency of oscillator 2. Let's just listen to oscillator 2 on its own. Here it's stepping, and that's because the envelope is sending the MIDI messages to the OB6, and they're literally saying go from a C1 to a C sharp 1 to a D, D1. <laughs> So the way you'd get around something like that is by modulating the oscillators with the filter envelope and then modulating the filter with this. So for example, let's put VCO1 on sync, modulated by the filter envelope. So we can use the filter envelope to modulate VCO1 and then we use this to modulate the filter. Let's turn that up again. Let's put it on the filter. So the filter frequency is dropping while VCO1 is increasing. Can't do that on the synth itself. Then we've got different modes as well. So we've got a single shot, or we've got looping. And then we go to the next mode, we've got a1 to R, so we're taking the release into account now as well, so it'll be a much longer loop. So you can hear there nice little complexities in that in that envelope. So let's put it into sort of sequencer mode now, shall we? Let's put it into eighths again. And the mode we'll have it as an eight step. Now each of these knobs is sending a different MIDI CC to the filter frequency. And you can have that up to 16 steps, and in the menus you can go and change the actual length to 
anything between 1 and 16. If we go into the menu, you can see change the steps, number of steps. Let's have it as 5. Eight. Three, two. We've got slew in there as well. And that's synced with the synth. And that's really nice actually because you can sync your delays on the OB6 as well. So you can have everything all synced up. Again, I'm just using it on a really simple sound so you can hear what it does. But that's modulating the filter. We can modulate anything we like. So let's maybe modulate VCO2's frequency, shall we? Now it's acting like an old school sequence set. It's really just good fun, hands-on, tweakability. It's the sort of thing you don't do on the machine itself. You end up with results that you wouldn't normally get. And on the second page, We've got things like velocity sensitivity, uni or bipolar, all various things, and MPE spread. I'll show that in a minute. So I've not showed everything, but there's quite a lot going on there. Hopefully it gives you a general idea. Let's move over to the LFOs then. So starting off with LFO1, it's exactly the same as LFO2, and I'll just explain what these things are here. So we've got the sync mode, so there's no sync at the minute. Let's turn it up. Then we've got different type of wave, so we've got a cosine, we've got a sine, triangle, let's go back just to hear the sine. Difference between the cosine and the sine is one starts at a maximum, one starts at a minimum. Although they're just free running at the minute, let's um, sync up to key. Always start at maximum. Starting at a minimum, I think. <laughs> Let's slow it down. The sign starts from zero. And the cos starts from maximum. We've got triangle. Got to soar up. Soar down. Square. Step. Random, which is like a sample and hold. We've got a slew. Noise. It's not as random as random, so it gently meanders between values. And then maximum, which means it's always just on the maximum. Then back to sign. And we can change the shape of that using shift. I'll just put this on hold. When we're in sync mode, we can change the shape of that again. We can offset it. And that's changing the curve from a logarithmic to a linear to exponential, probably best heard on a sawtooth.
When we're in one of the sync modes, so we can see here we've got, it's got we've got two, two, four, eight dotted, eight, eight S, eight T, sixteen. We go up to a few bars, one bar. Come back down to eight, shall we? There we go. The frequency knob isn't changing the frequency because we've got that set using sync. What it does is it changes the actual wave shape. <laughs> which is different than the shift. So tons and tons of flexibility in that as well. We've got a delay which waits before the LFO comes in. Then we've got a fade as well, so it'll fade in. You can have a delay with a fade. You can make it four times as fast. And you can pick the number of cycles it does between zero and nine. So on zero, it'll just loop. Let's make it a bit slower. On cycle, we can have one to nine separate cycles. So you can have it cycling three times, you can have another one delayed and then start doing something a completely different wave at a completely different speed. So you can get really, really super complex modulations and on top of that you've got the envelope that could be running as well. So you can start to see that you can do all sorts of things that you can't do on something like the OB6. Let's try and do one of those complex ones, shall we? We'll go into LFO2 and we'll add something there. So there we've got LFO1 doing three cycles, then we've got LFO2 that's delayed, and then fades in doing something else at a different speed. So just interesting, it gives you an idea of the type of sort of complex things you can do with it. So we've looked at the sync, we've looked at the waves, we know what the destination is, that sort of stands to reason, but what about this mult? So at the minute it's on max and that means the modulation will always be on max, but we've got lots of different sources. So they're the sources by which we um, attenuate the modulation. For example, let's go to gate. So there the LFO is only modulating while we've got the key press. Let's try another one. Ungate, so now it should modulate only when a release. Release velocity, so hardly any velocity. Bit more. <laughs> uh, let's try something else. We've got the different CCs, which are sort of your pitch bend and your uh, volume CCs. Release after touch. After touch. Mod wheel. So lots of different ways of controlling the modulation. Essentially, the mult controls the amount of modulation. So over to LFO3 now. LFO3 isn't anything like LFO1 or LFO2. It's set at a trapezoid. We've got a slope up and a slope down, and we can adjust the, um, the, the plateau at the top, and we can adjust the plateau at the bottom using hold high and hold low. But we've got this sampling frequency parameter as well, and that acts a little bit like a sample and hold in that it samples at regular intervals according to which pattern you've got there, though. But it resets at the start of every cycle of the loop, which means that you get really regular patterns with it. And I do find this is one of those things that you sort of play around with and you find something nice, but it does work well modulated with the others. Because everything's regular, you just get this nice little swings and things where it's slightly out, but it resets at the start of every, every loop, which means that it's never too far out and never goes crazy. 
and we can see here that it's synced to the synth like the others were, so let's bring another one of them back in, shall we? And you do find yourself reaching for the synth or the box, sort of as if they are the same instrument, which is quite cool. So let's take a look at what else we've got in LFO3 when we go into the menu. And we've got similar settings, delay, fade, cycle, etc. This nudge is used to nudge um, back and forth slightly if you're trying to put it in time with anything else. And it's got this on most of the parameters, I think, and that's because MIDI doesn't send a clock, so you just need to sometimes nudge it. I've not had a problem, I've not been syncing it up with drum machines and stuff though, but the option is in there if it's needed. Let's take a look at some other little functions it's got on it then, shall we? Let's take a look at the ARP. We've got different syncs, we've got two, four, and eight. Let's leave it on eight, put it on, put it on up. So all the sort of bits you'd expect, even got a latch here as well. On the voices menu, we can change the number of voices that we will play, we can change the octave, we can scale it to the size of the keyboard you've got, so that if you're using the keyboard as a modulation mult, you can have it at zero and 100%, and you can change that to various sizes of keyboard. I've got a volt per octave there as well for your CV. And then we've got this thing, a sub note and a sub velocity. And what we can do is we can add almost like a sub oscillator. If I play a note, let's just take the harp off. So if I add a sub note, can change the tuning of that. You can hear I've added the second note. Just another nice little addition there, we can change the velocity of that. So that's a little bit like having a mixer for a sub oscillator. But obviously the sub oscillator isn't like a standard sub oscillator just playing a simple triangle for example, it's playing what everything else is. I've also got this thing called selective note after touch. Go into the menu, after touch menu, selective. We'll pick the top note, so now only the top note will be affected by my after touch. We go into here, we've got it on maximum, so basically it'll just give full. I'm not trying to give any modulation via any LFO. If we look in here, I've got the after touch of the multiplier or the control, and the selective note after touch is the destination. So if I play. I 
only the top note was getting affected by the aftertouch and on the synth we've got the aftertouch set to the filter frequency. If we put that on VCO1, now it should change pitch. So again, you get sort of MPE style things from an aftertouch keyboard without actually having an MPE keyboard. Just a nice little, nice little addition. And then we've got MPE modes on this as well. Let's go into the menu, page two, we've got MPE off, let's turn it on. We've got poly one mode and we've got poly two mode. And the difference there is just the way it picks which voice it's gonna play. So it changes from acting like a Prophet 6 to acting like a Prophet 5, if you're interested. But basically it means it'll play the same oscillator or the same voice over and over, or it'll round robin and play through them. And it does make a difference when you're using things like vintage mode, because each of the voices sounds slightly different. But anyway, that's getting a little bit geeky. I'll show you what it does when you're using it on an LFO. So let's come out of there. Onto the VCF. We need to put the synth itself into MIDI polyphonic expression mode, which on this means put it onto channel, what's effectively channel 17. And then we put this onto its MIDI polyphonic expression output. We've got MPE Y, and MPE Y on the synth is set to the filter, I think. I'll just double check. No, it's not. It's been set to the pulse width of oscillator 2. So we need to go to the low pass. So we've got MPEY going to the synth, the synth set up for MPEY to change the filter. So hopefully we'll get this sine wave modulating the filter on this. But now what we've got is we've got a different LFO pair voice. So we can hear there, they're all acting at different times. Press the keys together, you can hear them all together. Let's just speed it up a little bit. That's quite a nice effect. And it's definitely different to this. It's also got something called MPE spread in here as well. We've got it on zero here and it goes up to nine. And what it does is it changes the LFO speed pair voice. So each of the voices has a slightly different speed on its LFO. Because although these are playing um, at different phases, they're all in the same time. So if I play this on, um, I don't know, stick it all the way up to nine. You can hear each note is playing at a different speed. Put that on back on zero. Back on nine. So again, just a nice little effect. You just can't do that on the synth itself. You can do similar things, but you lose VCO2. So this does bring in that added flexibility. Okay, let's see how easy this is. We go from the OB6, we'll go to the CC synth. There we go. And then we go to load the CC synth. Install names. Let's go through that. Super 6, installed, pretty quick. Okay, let's then come out of this. So we've got different destinations there. Let's <laughs> see if this will work, okay. So let's look for the cutoff on this. Well, let's try the resonance as I can find that. Literally, I uh, just sent Steve from Yorick Tech the, <laughs> the, the manual and he's, and he's managed to, to do this without testing it, so. So there you go, that's working. Let's try something else. Let's try the oscillator mix. Amount. Slow that down a bit. So 
So there you go, that works. I was just testing really that if you get the CC numbers from the manual, you put them into this, do they do what you think they're gonna do? And yes, they do. I'm not gonna go in any more detail. It's not as integrated as the OB6 or the P6. You won't be able to do the global settings or read the patch names and stuff like that. But as far as a MIDI CC controller, it's working with something that's never been tested on before. So, so that's pretty interesting. So yeah, all in all, a very impressive, nice, piece of kit. It does work on MIDI. I've not tested it to destruction. I've not tried using MPE on all four different modulation routines or even five modulation routines uh, and throwing everything coming down a single MIDI cable to see what happens. Although Yorick do say that if you have too much MIDI information, it basically tries to cut it down so that it doesn't get sort of blocked or whatever happens to MIDI information when you've got too much of it going down a pipeline. So yeah, all in all, um, I am very impressed. It's uh, an additional little tool for lots and lots of synths. It's not cheap, it's over 500 pounds. Then the wood panels, as I say, they were an extra 50 pounds. The CV in and out, I think they're another 50 or 60 pounds. So it adds up, but you know, try and put that in context with maybe some modular kit and, and maybe a few LFOs modular, uh, maybe of a similar price, I don't know. So if you've got a synth with limited modulation capabilities, this could be the answer to all your prayers. I was always disappointed in the Prophet 6 only having a single LFO. Once you've used PWM, you can't use your LFO for anything else. Um, when I upgraded from the Prophet 8 to the Prophet 6, I did miss the extra LFOs, and now I've got them. Not only on the Prophet 6, but on the OB6 and the Prophet 5. I'm a Voyager and, and this as well. Although this isn't mine because most of this stuff is lent to me. So if you do like what I'm doing and you do want to support the channel, do pop over to Patreon and support me there or at least subscribe and ring the bell if it's been of use to you. Anyway, I will see you soon.